G'day guys, uh, today I'm just doing a bit of a general update on sort of everything I suppose. Um, you've probably come to understand that uh, my mind's like always like a million miles an hour so every now and then I probably will have to do these little updates just to explain the thought processes that go into me coming to I suppose where I am as far as my decisions go because they pretty they change quite you know often. Um, so basically first thing F truck. Um, so we had the 390 earmark to go on the F truck, which was going to get boosted and, uh, you know, be a turbo big block with a uh, Holly Sniper EFI. Um, I started pulling down the big block. I was slack and didn't film it, I'm sorry. But uh, as you can see here, maybe if I can show you properly, cylinder eight has picked up a gudgeon spit pin and uh, scored the shit out of the bore. <coughs> so, from there, sort of started the thought process of is it worth doing the 390? It's gonna cost a bit to spend on it. So when you work out <coughs> to rebuild the 390 and the C6, I'm looking at like probably a good three grand um, to rebuild the 390 in Camet and then probably another sort of thousand dollars to rebuild the C6. So you're already at four grand. Then I still have to buy the Holly Air Force yeah, um, Holly Sniper EFI setup, which is like another 1500 bucks. So all of a sudden you're starting to get like five and a half grand just to get the motor ready, um, let alone turboed and that. So and that's just with a three speed C6. The other thing with the 390, sorry, is uh, because of the main webbing on the 390 blocks, they're pretty much only good for around uh, like 300 horsepower anyway. They're only two bolt mains. And it's not actually just the bolts that are the problem. It's the actual webbing on the block on the mains, on the main journals. They, uh, they start to crack when they're under too much boost and that, so you're pretty limited with how much power you can make with them anyway, so I thought for the price it's starting to get at with the limitations I have of running that motor, it's probably, you know, not really worth it for me to do. Um, so I started looking at maybe just doing a Windsor. Obviously the Windsor's a lot stronger motor, but, you know, same sort of thing. I got to the same sort of area where it's going to cost like five and a half, six grand. It's still going to be a three-speed auto, you know, just a an older motor basically. So, ended up basically getting onto the train of uh, doing an LS swap. Um, and I know at this point, you're probably all thinking we are sort of die-hard LS fanboys. We're not really. We just appreciate good motors, and LSs are just really good, efficient motors, which is very important, very tunable, and uh, readily available and cheap. So. You know, for five and a half grand, I could pretty much buy myself a 4L80 gearbox, which is, you know, good with a few minor modifications, is good for, for sort of 800 wheel, and buy just an LS1 donor car or even an iron blocked LS. At the end of the day, have a four speed auto uh, and a motor that's newer and more efficient and uh, can handle more power. It sort of just made sense that way. Um, obviously, it's a car that I'm building for me. It's pretty much, I'm planning on keeping that car pretty much for the rest of my life. So. It's going to end up being probably a similar setup to the Cruiser, but single turbo. And yeah, because the Ford, the F truck's got a nine inch in it as well. So I'll do some modifications to the nine inch, make sure the 480 will cope the power. And if I end up going iron blocked, I'm pretty much good for sort of 800 wheel, which is going to be super fun. So that's sort of where that is at. But the thing is now that it's gotten to that point, obviously when I bought it, I wanted to get onto it pretty quick. Cause I thought, Hey, you know, I want to get this done quick to have a tow car, <coughs> but, um, it sort of turned into quite an expensive project. By the time, obviously, what we learnt with the Cruiser, we've got a pretty good idea of what it's all gonna cost and how much work's involved. And uh, it's basically just a little bit out of reach at the moment, financially. Um, so basically, it's just gonna be sitting tight for a little while. It's no longer going to be the main priority for me because it's just a bit out of reach for at this moment um, until I'm a bit better set up financially. Uh, so. It's just gonna sit tight, basically. I'm gonna sort out something else for a tow car. I'll uh, keep this posted on that. I'm hoping to buy maybe a van or something, but basically I don't wanna to commit to that. It's gonna to be too much money. It's gonna be pretty much take all my resources and time for too long while I don't have a car for seat time for drifting. So basically at the moment, my plan is to fire, sort out another car for that I can tow with. Um, the SS can come off the road. I have decided to put an LS1 <laughs> in the uh, Cressida. So I, I sort of was tossing up with motors with that and I sort of came to a conclusion for the same reason is that I just want to get it done fast. 
I want it to be reliable and cheap and basically the best options I've got is I've got the LS1 T56 in the Commodore and I've got the Cressy so quite an easy conversion it's reliable it's cheap and it'll get me a heap of fucking seat time and it should just yeah it should just be bulletproof yeah Cressy's going to get LS1 but again, we're not LS fanboys, we're not diehard LS fans. I had considered doing a 1J, um, I'd considered a few things that, you know, would have maybe been a little bit cooler, but the fact is that I'm not exactly building that to get, you know, noticed or e-fame or anything like that. I just want seat time, I just want to get it done. So that's pretty much going to be main priority now, is uh, find something else that I can sort out for a tow car and uh, basically get the Cressida built. ASAP and start getting a lot more seat time because that's ultimately the goal. Basically once I sort out a tow car and then the Cressy's done and then I'll try and set myself off a bit better and then I'll probably look at doing the F truck a bit later on down the track. Uh, a few other projects that probably need updates on that have been around are uh, the Volvo. Volvo's still here, still around. Um, so obviously as you probably know the Volvo was going to get our beat and put on the street. Um, that's the other thing is the Cressy, I've been, look, I've been going through it, the Cressy is super tidy that tidy that I'm actually going to just put the LS in and I'm probably going to put it on the street for a while just so I've got a cool street car for a little while I reckon it'll be cool um, basically put it on the street until I get in trouble or it gets defected or it has to come off and then I might go nuts with it and cage it and do all that sort of thing but for now it's going to be a pretty cool street car um, the Volvo I still want to do something with this Volvo because of its sentimental value to me if you watch the series you know where it came from it's you know it's it's been in my life for a while and obviously being a, a good mate of mine's old man's car and uh, getting me all around the country to race was pretty cool. So I still want to do something with it. Probably not going to put it on the road. Basically had a good look over it. It's probably hard to see on camera, but there's a lot of rust in that sill. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that needs work on. Given the, the price of these, you can still pick them up cheap. You can pick up way tidier ones cheap that just need less work to get them on the road. So basically it's going to be just too much work to put back on the road. So I'm actually thinking about still doing a, an RB Volvo, but I'm actually thinking about um, keeping my eye out for a tidier shell and doing that one. And for this, we're thinking about, I don't know, maybe even just turn it into a skid car, um, like a Power Cruise Special. So that might happen, but uh, again, sort of just get to that as I come to it. Like I said, my main priority is getting a car built so I can get more seat time and get back to drifting. We'll see how that goes. It's still here, it's not going anywhere, and it's, like I said, it's got some sentimental value to me, so I will do something with it one day. It's definitely going to get done. So another project that I sort of only touched on, I didn't really explain too much detail what it was, is the Gemini. Gemini's still here, it's still kicking. Um, so the project with the Gemini was meant to be a uh, compound boosted L67 V6 4 L60E. We basically, I did the sums and I've worked it out that we could probably get this car to run a 10 second pass for less than six grand. So that was what this whole project was going to be. It was going to be a budget drag car build basically. How, how cheap can we run a 10 second pass? Basically because it's way too far from being able to put it on the road. It's too rusty. It's uh, way too much work to put on the road. It was never going to be on the road. Uh, it was always going to be just a drag car, which meant it wasn't really good for too much. It's, I'm still thinking about doing it, but I've got a few other ideas where we could build a 10 second car for less than that sort of money, but have it as a street car. And I think I'd rather put the effort and work into that than put the effort and work into something that can never be on the street and is basically not good for much and I'll never get my money back for it sort of thing all the time. Still unsure whether the Gemini will go ahead at this point. It's still there. Just gonna be a wait and see sort of thing. So anyway, that's just a bit of an update on my projects. Like I said, they're all going to be around and something will end up happening with them all. But as I stated, my main priority is to get more seat time and get another drift car built. And that's probably going to be what I'm going to be working towards. Um, unfortunately, I don't do this. This is not full time. I don't make a lot of money. I've still got to work. So I don't have heaps of money to spare to throw at these projects. And um, I don't exactly have heaps of time to do them all. So they do just tick along. But like I said, <laughs> Main priority is getting back to the track because I'm sick of not driving. Shouldn't have sold my R31, I very much regret that, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Heaps of Rex's projects lying around that he wants to get to. Heaps of stuff's gonna be happening. At the moment, F truck's gonna be put off until I can afford it, and the Cressy hopefully get done ASAP within the next couple of months, and I'll have something else for a tow car for the interim. And um, yeah, we'll work from there. So yeah, I've still got like a few tonners. Rex has got two tonners, one's got a uh, supercharged big block in it at the moment. It's gonna get a turbo big block or something. I don't know, he, he's like me, he changes his mind all the time as well. We've got like another tunnel we're gonna do something with. We've got the Tirana, we've got a VK. Uh, I've got an EA Falcon. That's the other drag car I wanna build. I, I reckon I could build the EA Falcon into a 10 second car for around 6K and it would be on the street. So that's why I'm thinking instead of putting the time and money into the Gemini to do essentially the same end goal, but in something that can't be registered and 
you know, isn't really worth anything to be sold and is probably a lot more work as well. It's going to be a lot more work in strengthening, uh, like, uh, pickup points for suspension and that because the floor's all rusty. I'm going to need to put a new floor pan in it. There's a fair bit of work in it. Although it would be cheap and I guarantee you it would run a 10 because it would make around 520 wheel and weigh around 950 kilos. So if we can get it to hook up, it should be sweet. But the EA could probably do the same thing but have it on the street, which means it's actually worth something to sell. So it's worth putting the time and effort into doing and it's also registered, which means we can go and do Drag Challenge Australia and all that sort of thing. So. So that's sort of where I'm going at. I'm seriously considering just scrapping the Gemini project because it's just, it's not worth it. Um, but yeah, again, this will all happen in due time after I've got a drift car and, you know, sorted that out. And probably after I've done the F-Truck because I really, really want to do the F-Truck. I, I want to have my badass tow car again. So yeah, that's pretty much where we are at. Uh, the other thing is with time, we are still trying to develop this property. We've still got to build in the mezzanine upstairs. That's going to be happening pretty soon so it is pretty hard to find time to do all this as well as money to do everything so yeah at the moment none of that up there is actually built in yet i live up there in my swag <laughs> uh not ideal but you gotta do what you gotta do you gotta make sacrifices to get where you want to be so working on getting that built in too so basically yeah time time is a big thing at the moment um i've been spending heaps of time lately tidying up this bloody shed as you might have seen earlier like in the other videos it's a, it was a mess it still is a bit of a mess it's still getting sorted out but I've been slowly ticking away at really tidying it up and making it, uh, you know, more a work-friendly environment. Actually organising everything and, you know, having everything where it needs to be and giving everything a home. So basically just working on getting this place a bit better set up so it's a bit more efficient to work in. Going to be working on building it upstairs. Also, we're probably going to build a, a another tunnel pretty soon as just sort of something to build and get rid of, get some money in the door. So yeah, time's a bit of an issue, but my priority is getting my ass into the seat at the track. So uh, as far as the Cressy goes as well, I will be doing a like another uh, budget build drift car series, essentially. As you all know, the, uh, the SS here cost me two grand. So that's pretty, pretty cheap as far as a motor and box and stuff goes. Um, the Cressy cost us 700 bucks. Uh, obviously the motor's knocking, but that doesn't matter to us, but so between the two of them, they owe us, well, they owe me 2,700 bucks. Um, so as you can imagine, by the time I pull the motor and gearbox out of this and wreck out what's left, and then the, the Cressy actually has a set of genuine uh, Volt meshes on it, which I don't particularly like, and I don't like the, the fitment of them, but they're worth a fair bit of money. So if I can pull them off and clean them up and sell them too, um, by the time it all gets put together, it's going to not cost very much at all. So it'll probably be another another good thread. I'll keep you guys updated on the costs. Um, the, as you know, the gearbox in the SS is a bit sad. So I'm going to need to rebuild the gearbox. It definitely needs a new clutch. Uh, the clutch is not very happy. So, And I'll probably, um, I'm thinking about probably camming it and putting like, well, it needs springs either way, but I'm thinking about actually camming it while the motor's out and doing the cam bearings and doing a trunnion upgrade on the heads and putting decent head gaskets and head bolts on it and stuff. So. There'll be a bit of cost in there that is probably not particularly necessary, but I'm looking to make around the 400 wheel mark in the Cressida, so it's gonna need to be canned, obviously, and um, just do a mathless tune on it, basically. So I'll keep you guys updated with that. So that's another budget drift build that's coming. Um, and yeah, so that should be good, so keep tuned for that. I wanna be trying to do a bit more riding as well, even though I know I shouldn't, because my arm is broken. But, uh, you know, I figure the worst thing that can happen is it gets more broken and then it's even more broken in which case they have to fix it then anyway so i think it's not really that big of a deal obviously would not be cool to really break it because you'd be i'd be out of action again for like another probably six months because uh they reckon if i break it again they're just gonna have to put an artificial radial head on which means i've got to go back into rehab and learn how to like move my arm and shit again so i don't know i really don't know i really i really really want to do more riding i miss riding so much but i know i shouldn't so having this thing here is a bit of a, a pain. So I might actually, might sell it to fund the Cressida a bit more, get it done a bit quicker. I don't know. I don't know, honestly, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Thanks guys. Hit like, subscribe, keep up with us and uh, appreciate everyone who, who watches and everyone who, you know, gives us feedback and comments. We love hearing from you guys. So hopefully very soon we'll just be getting heat more seat time. There'll be a lot more actual driving videos instead of us just, you know, screwing around building stuff. So. Anyway, there's uh, plenty coming for the channel, but uh, yeah, it's just, unfortunately, I'm pretty broke and pretty time poor, so.
doing the best I can and appreciate everyone that is keeping up and I'm sorry that I changed my mind more than I changed my undies, but what do you do, you know?